Uh, now that you guys, it seems like the return game and punt return and kickoff returns have, have really kind of been sparking the, the team. Um, is that something that you think can be contagious in terms of like getting guys to? Because uh, Norvell said they've already been bought in to special teams in the return game, but when I guess do you see any more confidence or, or excitement about that unit now? Well, you know, I think um, when you have the on-field success, it just reinforces the messaging. I mean, the the uh, you know that's three weeks in a row that we've had what we we, we determine as a, a game-changing play in the return game. Um, had the 75-yard punt return a couple weeks back, and then uh, had the return against Duke, and then like this past week, uh, Duke got that one 44 yards. You know, so. Um, you know, the return game is starting to click. Um, and, and I think that's one of those things that, um, you know, because we say it all the time, and, you know, I don't know if, if people just kind of take it with a grain of salt, but I really felt like we were really, really close to hitting some early on. But you need a lot of things to happen for it all to, to play out. And I think, um, you know, the, the last couple of games, guys have really been on point in terms of what their assignments were, um, how they executed. And then I think at the return spot with both Deuce and Keon or whoever's been back there have done a really good job. Jared mentioned he had a conversation with you um, during the week about his um, practice and how he wanted to practice harder. Did you see that? The rest of the weekend, and how did that carry over into the game? And what does it say about a, a pl um, you know player of his caliber who's always looking to get, improve? Well, you know, I think um, you know, I think one of the things that that can be overlooked is um, the amount of noise that can be around players, especially ones that are are high profile and visible. And um, one of the things that that we just talked about last week was because it wasn't as if he was playing poorly like that wasn't the case but one of the things we talked about last week was just getting back to basics and um, you know just going out and playing as hard as you possibly can let's start with that and then let everything else kind of take care of itself and um, you know I think I think he did have a really good week of practice and um, that doesn't guarantee that you're going to go and have a great game but it gives you your best chance to go and have a great game. And um, then he went out and it translated for him on Saturday. And it wasn't just the two sacks. I mean, I thought, you know, the whole the whole uh, of the of his game, how he played the run, um, how he affected the, the passer when he didn't get there. Um, I thought he was really effective in the game. And uh, you know, it, for me, I just wanted to see him continue to grow and and take positive steps as a player and uh, as a, as a person. Is Byron getting increasingly comfortable with his role the more reps he's getting out there? Yeah, you know, I, I think Byron um, has, has gotten a little bit better every week. And uh, I think he's gaining confidence. Um, I think he's gaining belief that he has the ability to go in there in any situation and, and do a good job for us. And um, that's showing up and reflecting in a lot of different ways. But um, I'm happy for him and, and his progress. But it's been a lot of work. And, um, you know, he's he's – persevered through some some things throughout the course of his career here uh, to get him to this point and you know I, I just think that that with each game he's gotten better and I'm looking forward to see what that ceiling really looks like with Patrick Payton him becoming an every down defensive end for you guys how has he taken the next step especially over the last four or five games well you know I think I think you see it in his physicality you know I think Pat was you know, and as part of just where he was in his physical development when he got here, um, you know, he was he was thin and, and needed to gain strength in the weight room. And um, coming off of last year, that was going to be his his number one goal and priority was to to gain some some muscle and some gain some weight and and really focus on the on being physical. And you know, we do pods every Tuesday, which is our O line versus D line in the run game, and. Um, just seeing his his development in that, um, Pat Pat is a is is growing into a really physical run defender and um, is really becoming a very complete player in every way. Um, and then you add to that the fact that he's really really smart in terms of how he understands and plays the game. Um, you know, I'm I, I see him growing every week, um, just overall as a player. Going up to Pitt, that's going to be your coldest game of the season as we enter into November and hopefully December. How does the weather affect the kicking game? 
Well, you know, the, the weather certainly can have an impact, um, you know, and uh, it, it impacts kicking game in a couple different ways. Um, you know, obviously the, the ball doesn't necessarily travel as, as well um, when it's a little bit colder. Um, you have more of an opportunity in some cases for wind. Um, th that will certainly affect the, the kicking game. Um, you know, but it will always be addressed, but we also have a mindset and approach that we control the things that we can control. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll be out there early with the kickers because um, they're, you know, I've played in that stadium several times. Um, there is a little bit of, of um, wind that, that sometimes does impact some things there. Probably a little bit, um, you know, looking at the forecast, maybe not as big of a factor maybe this week, but I'll make sure they're out there and, and are comfortable with it. And, you know, like I said, we're just going to focus on the things that we can control and um, but be aware of our, our, our situation and surroundings. Obviously, Ryan started the season kick, starting 12 of 12 and then missed that one kick. Um, what will happen on that play, and um, what do you say to him after to keep him up? Because I know he had some struggles last year with his um, confidence after a few misses. Sure, you know I, I don't I don't think uh, from a confidence standpoint he will be phased. Um, you know, it happens sometimes. You know, and and uh, you know he was the first one to come over, ask him what happened after the miss kick. He said I just didn't hit it good, and uh, you know that shows some some growth and maturity on his part as well. There wasn't a whole bunch of, you know, well this happened or that happened it was just hey i didn't hit it good um and if that's the case you just move on and you do better on the next one um and and i'm fully confident that that's where this will head has um keon been good for deuce in terms of just seems like since he's been since keon's been here it seems like he's taken deuce kind of under his wing a little bit and and it he seems really excited about the way deuce is returning now and do you think he's has he helped him at all? Have you noticed that at all? Um, I would say this. I think Keon has helped everybody in in our program, and I and I say that not only because obviously he's a he's a talented player, and that that's easy for everyone to see, but just his approach every day, um, the way he is in the locker room, the way he is, you know, on the practice field, um, you know, he's he's a he's an all in, all about the team kind of guy, and. Uh, you know, I think that's one of the things that's really special about our group. Um, and, and it's neat because it includes even guys that have only been here for a few months. Um, this, is a, this is a very close-knit team, and I think uh, when you're really good players are willing to invest in other guys, um, it makes everybody better. And I see that with Keon all over the place. On the punt Alex had that got down to the, the one, the level of precision for him to do the punt and with that kind of spin and then I guess the effort by the coverage guys to go ahead and get a play, make the play as well. You just got to break down what happened on that. Yeah, you know, so it, it, it's a really good testament to where um, Alex has, has grown and, and really his, his big picture understanding of the game. Um, the particular punt that was called, um, he actually kicked it a little bit different than I anticipated that he was going to kick the ball. And when he came over the sideline, I said, you know, I asked him about it, and he, and he was just talking about his ball control situation where he was on the field, didn't feel like he, that the, the style of punt in which we had called, he was going to be able to control it as well. So, you know, he made, he made a decision that, that doesn't affect anybody, but he made a decision on how he wanted to hit the ball. And, you know, obviously it played out really well. And he knows better than, than anyone how he needs to hit the ball to get the results that he wants. And, you know, that was a fantastic kick. Um, he, you know, big play in the game because it, it ultimately led directly to a score because we were able to get a three and out defensively. Um, and then, um, you know, for the guys covering, I thought they did a fantastic job. And, and J-Dub, um, you know, I do want to point him out on, on this because um, what he's been able to do this year on special teams has been been awesome. So, um, you know, I, I've been really pleased with his growth, and he was the one that got down there and, and down the ball. And, um, you know, I, I think just as a, as a whole coverage unit, those guys take a lot of pride in what they, they do, but the guys on that play did a really good job. Going way back to when we were doing Zoom calls in 2020, you remember talking about, I think it was after the UNC game, like if you guys are doing your job right as coaches, the team will get better as the season goes on. Um, and that's kind of been the thing under this, this regime. I guess, simple question, but like why? Why has the program gotten better later in seasons? I, th I think it's the consistency of approach. Um, you know, the, the, the way that, and it starts with Coach Norvell, uh, the way that, that he is every single day. Um, his mindset is 
the the objective and the objective for this program is to get better every day and that mindset and that um, that will to improve is reinforced every single day and if your goal is to get incrementally better every day as you go you're going to see the, the results that we've seen since the time that, that we've been here um, we do get better throughout the course of the season i think uh, that's a direct reflection of of uh, the philosophy of the program, the way that Coach Norvell approaches it, and the fact that our players have done a tremendous job of buying into what we ask them to do. Um, and, and the consistency of approach is, you know, every single day is, is essentially the same in terms of what our objective is. And um, when that's the case, uh, you're going to see gains throughout the course of the year. I imagine uh, screen game's got to be challenging for any defensive front, but um, how well do Coach Atkins, Coach Norvell, that staff, and these players, how well did they execute them when you go up against them? I, you know, they're, they're, as, they're uh, as good in a screen game as, as anyone I've ever had an opportunity to be around and see on a consistent basis. Um, and part of it is that they, they're really good at, at um, disguising the look that that gets them into the screen um, and then I think that both uh, coach Norvell and coach Atkins do a really good job of of getting us in that call and in great situations um, because I think you need both I think you need the timing of when that call is made and then you need the execution of, of the of the actual play and um, you know you every week it seems like we have a big play in the, in the screen game and um, you know, for me, I know as a defensive line coach, um, that would be concerning going into every game because, you know, it, it's hard to live in both worlds. It's hard to say as a D-line coach, hey, go rush, 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 except watch out for the screen. Like, that's, that's hard to do. And, um, you know, when, when we have had our opportunities offensively to make impactful plays in the screen game, it's, it's really changed games. All good? Okay. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you.